In October 2004, the contract for the offshore removal and onshore disposal of the Frigg Field facilities was awarded to the Norwegian company Arca Offshore Partner. Nearly 85,000 tonnes of equipment and steel from six top sides and three substructures were due to be removed to shore for disposal. One of the substructures, or jackets, is the DP-2. The weight of the eight-legged jacket structure, including a module support frame, is 11,600 tonnes. The height of the structure is 123 metres, with a footprint of 62 by 43 metres. The jacket is fixed to the seabed with 20 piles. A standard way of removing such a structure is to use a huge offshore crane ship to cut and lift the jacket in smaller pieces. This method was challenged and a new and painted in method has been developed by Arca Solutions. Using buoyancy tanks on each of the jacket's four corner legs, the jacket will be lifted from the seabed and towed to shore, where it will be dismantled and recycled at Arca Solutions Yard at Stord in Norway. The buoyancy tank assembly, in short BTA, consists of two 53 meter long cylinders, each with a diameter of 6.6 .6 meters. A control room is located at the top of each cylinder, giving a total height of 65 meters. Each BTA weighs 1,000 tons and has a lifting capacity of approximately 3,000 tons. The BTAs were built and assembled at Blatt Industries in Oldborg, Denmark. Shipped one by one by barge to Hinna near Stavanger, Norway, for testing and temporary storage. Two 50-ton bollard tugs are used to tow the BTAs the distance of 140 nautical miles from Hinna to the Frigg Field. With an average speed of four knots, the tow takes 35 hours. Upon arrival, control of the BTAs is transferred to the main operation vessels, MSV Botnica and Nordica. The umbilical is connected, as well as the hold back and pull-in wires. To avoid snap loads, the wires are connected to high-speed, constant-tension winches. As the BTAs are towed in a horizontal position, they have to be upended to vertical and ballasted to installation draft before the pull-in can commence. When the pull-in operation commences, the installation vessels, with their dynamic positioning systems, slowly approach the jacket leg. The significant wave height during this phase can be no greater than 1.8 meters. Each BTA is equipped with DGPS systems which communicate with similar systems on the jacket. As such the BTAs can be positioned with high accuracy. Navigation screens on the installation vessels provide detailed information about the BTA's position, motion, draft and inclination. The lower guide enters the jacket leg first. An observation ROV is positioned underneath the lower guide during this operation. When the lower guide has entered the jacket, the main vessels move closer to the jacket leg, enabling the upper guides to also enter the jacket. The fender panels on the upper guide ensure that the jacket leg receives no critical damage during the pull-in. As the BTA is pulled further in, the mating clamp closes and temporarily secures the BTA to the jacket leg. The pull-in wires are now redundant and can be slackened. The mating clamp 
has now brought the horizontal movements of the BTA to a state that allows the upper and lower pulling jacks to be activated. Activation of the upper and lower pull-in jacks results in further horizontal positioning of the BTA prior to the vertical installation phase. The main intention of the pull-in jacks during this phase is to reduce the impact loads between the BTA and the jacket leg, ensuring that the BTA meets the support bracket within the given limits. Next phase is vertical installation, which is achieved by means of de-ballasting. Pressurized air forces ballast water out, raising the BTA. As the BTA moves upwards, the TMUs activates in order to reduce the vertical impact forces between the BTA and the support bracket. The BTA is further de-ballasted until steel to steel contact is established between the support bracket and the BTA. Next, the pulling jacks are further extended until full contact is established between the jacket leg and the inner fender bars in the guides. Vertical motions have now been arrested and the main clamps are closed. An ROV observes to confirm the hydraulic jacks extend correctly around the jacket leg. When this activity is completed, BTA installation is considered finalized and the equipment to be used for the installation of the next BTA is disconnected. After all four BTAs have been installed, air hoses and signal cables from each BTA are connected to a central manifold and ballast system which is located on top of the main support frame on the jacket. Prior to float up, the seabed around the jacket piles is dredged. The piles, each with a diameter of 1.4 meters, are then cut below the mud line by an ROV operated cutting machine using diamond wire. When the last pile is cut, the BTAs are deballasted until the jacket reaches tow draft, giving a clearance of 10 meters to the seabed. ROVs monitor the float up and ensure that no debris is hanging from below the jacket. The DP2 jacket and the BTAs are then towed a distance of 120 nautical miles to Arc Solutions deep water site at Stord in Norway, where it will be dismantled and recycled after its 32 years in service. The BTAs will be disconnected and stored until the next project. Thank you.